you will never succeed in business unless you're capable of motivating and inspiring other people. Now, while in most instances, most things about management genuinely can be learned, in my experience, it really can be learned, there are a couple of things that I think are just essential starting points. If you're going to be a leader at any level in an organization, there are a couple of things that I believe that you have to have. And one of those I've already mentioned, and that is the ability to inspire and to motivate other people. And the other thing, which is actually a bit more difficult to put your finger on, but it's very definitely there, and that is nous, a bit of common sense, a bit of knowledge as to what works and what doesn't. In a strange kind of way, although I believe The Apprentice is, is much more about television, television entertainment than it is about business, it's very interesting to watch the candidates because you can see quite early on those who have that nous from those who don't. And, and I can guarantee you that if it's not there, you will never, ever make it through. I study successful managers over the years, and there's no doubt about it that they do have a presence, they have a capacity to make you feel that you're important and to make you feel, and this is, this is the subtle ingredient, that you want to please them. You want to get it right for them and with them. So I think those two things are absolutely essential. What is, what is NAUS? Well, it's, believe me, it's not academic intelligence. It's certainly not necessarily business experience, although that can help. It's not, it's not, it's not something that can be educated. It is a simple knowing of what is likely to work from what is not going to work, a knowledge and in tune with the worldness, a feeling of what can and cannot work, and, and, a, and a sense of being able, therefore, to concentrate your time on the things that really have a chance of success. That nous is a hugely important ingredient. I have seen any number of times people intellectualize a business to death. You know, and there's a lot of debate about whether this nous is innate or not. And I actually want to quote Alan Sugar on it, because Alan, in typical style, is pretty straightforward about it. Alan said that business skills can be acquired just as any fool can learn to play the piano. But the ability to see an opportunity, the alchemy of turning that into a profit, is a God-given talent as surely as perfect pitch. Now this is about knowing reality from wishful thinking. Good instinct, it's, it's worth a fortune. Back it in yourself and for sure back it in others when you see it. I've worked for many people who, you know, go all around the houses in terms of managing businesses and I've always found it the most frustrating thing. People do want to have a very clear view of what success is and happily they want to deliver it too. They're not there to make life difficult. By and large people want to deliver what's asked of them. So that clarity is um, amazingly important. I believe it's a, it's a much overused word and often, often used in the wrong way, but, but I do think you have to have a vision. You have to set out with a very clear vision of what it is that you're trying to do as an organization. and You must not waffle in the process. And that vision doesn't have to be financial. Very often in business, they, they are financial or they have financial uh, criteria attached to them. At Rotherham General Hospital, I persuaded the, the, the management there and, and some of the physicians <laughs> that what they should set out to do was to have the shortest waiting list in their area and to have the lowest return rate. In other words, things, the, the lowest rate of things going wrong. It took quite a lot of time to actually persuade them to do that. They have done it. They have got the lowest waiting list in the area and they do have the lowest return rates. And believe me, Rotherham is flourishing. They are taking more people on. The whole thing has a feel of positivity about it. And that's a good example of choosing an objective which is very simple and very straightforward. Because if you ask yourself, you know, what do we do in this business? Well, what they do is that they carry out uh, sur surgical procedures as well as other medical procedures on, on individuals. And what's the key thing within the NHS? The key thing within the NHS is waiting lists. If you crack that, then believe me, you're on to success. And it's a very good example of a very simple uh, objective, which is not financial, 
And I do believe that that vision, that objective, needs to thread that very fine line between something which genuinely is doable and that which people think is very difficult. Because otherwise, you're not taking people forward. If it's too easy, it's a demotivator. If it's too hard, it's certainly a demotivator. You need passion. Much, much underrated. And we're very shy about passion in the UK, I found. Less so in Ireland, where I live. But if you are not absolutely passionate about what you're doing, believe me, no one else in the organization will have that passion for it either. You have to convey that passion that what you're doing is important, that you do it better than anyone else, that as a group you're going to be top of whatever it is that you're doing. That passion will convey itself down an organization enormously quickly. And as I said, it's, it's, we're shy about it. And it doesn't have to be over-exuberant, but people do have to know that you personally, within your department, within the whole organization, within whatever it is that you are responsible for, you feel passionately about making it happen in the most brilliant way possible. And that will convey itself very clearly to those who work for you. You have to have courage. I believe that <coughs> running an organization or running a department within an organization can be frightening. Taking responsibility can be frightening. And I'm sure that if you think about it for yourselves, you will have the well-being of a large number of people often in your hands. Get, getting that right, getting that right for them, getting that right for you is a big responsibility. I've never bought the argument over executive pay. I think executives by and large are underpaid. It's a hugely important job managing. And it takes a lot of responsibility. And you have to have the courage to do it. Now, a very mundane but much underestimated part of management is follow-up. If you are not going to do something, don't say that you are. And if you ask for something to be done, check that it has. You know, if you've asked a manager to carry out a difficult task, maybe to reduce the sales force, or do something which was actually very difficult for him, and you then fail to ask him about it afterwards, or, or, or at a, some, some period afterwards, he, if, he, if he hasn't done it, he's relieved, but, but unsettled. If he has done it, and you haven't asked him, he feels he's done something really difficult, and nobody's noticed it, and nobody's appreciated it. And I promise you, he will think really long and hard about whether he has to do the next difficult thing that you ask him or her to do. Follow-up is essential, and all you need is a good system. At the beginning of every year, you write into the diary, you get your secretary to write into the diary, 12 meetings, one every month with every individual that reports to you. You never change the dates of those meetings unless the earth collapses. It's absolutely known that that's going to happen on those dates. It's fixed. No matter what the excuses, they happen. During the meeting, when you discuss what you want to happen, where you're going, what the things are that the individual is supposed to do or have done for the next time, you make a simple note of it in a very simple way. Make sure the meetings are not too long. At the end of the meeting, preferably within an hour at the end of the meeting, get that note out to the individual concerned, laying out what it is, the time scale, and, and, and the follow-up. And next month, when the inevitable meeting happens, it's in front of you. I promise you that no one will fail to do the things that you ask at those meetings because they know without a shadow of doubt it's going to come back up at the next, at the next meeting. And at the same time, you keep a file in your desk for every individual that works for you. Every time you pass something out to them, you put a copy in that file, and that also comes up at that meeting. Now... People often think about that as some kind of negative thing. It, believe me, it's not, because it can also pick up things that people do, and it can be enormously, enormously positive. And I promise you, it will lead to things being done 